Good evening, my friends. This is Len Mooney, and tonight we're going to talk about autoresponders. And I gotta tell you that I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. And autoresponders, in the beginning of my learning this stuff, was some of the most challenging stuff that I had to figure out. And I'm glad, I'm glad I finally figured it out, and I'm really excited to share with you what it is that I've learned. So here we go. What the bleep is an autoresponder? Well, it's a piece of software or a system that automatically sends emails to a list. <laughs> a list of what? Well, a list of people that have given you permission to send them emails. It's part of what we call permission marketing. The list is composed of customers or potential customers who have given you permission to email them with valuable information. It is not spam, and you have to be very careful not to spam your list. Otherwise, they won't be happy with you, and you will find your dropout rate is high. So many gurus will tell you that the money is in the list. The more people you have on your list, the more money you can make. Well, that's true, but the real truth is the money is in your relation with your list. It's not in the list per se. You have to build a good relationship with your list. They have to begin to know, like, and trust you. Once again, if you spam your list, you won't build a good relationship with them, and you will find the opt-out rate is very high. So the trick is to lead with value. Give them good content, good, valuable information. The main benefit of using an autoresponder is well, most people need to be told about a product or service seven times before they buy it. So in the internet world, typically someone will land on your home page or somewhere else on your website, they'll look at your offer, and then they'll move on to something else. And the majority of your visitors will simply vanish into thin air. You'll never know they were even there, and they'll never remember where they were or whether or not they ever, they want to come back, and if they do want to come back, they won't remember how to get back. So unless you can get them onto an opt-in mailing list that consists of multiple exposures, you lose them forever. So you can use an autoresponder to do this, to send messages out to people with their permission, convincing them and educating them about your product or service. You set it up once, it does the rest. By its very nature, the autoresponder is, well, it's automatic. As I said, you set it up once and it does it. So a potential new client opts in or registers through what is called a squeeze page and their name is added to your list. They then receive the sequence of emails that you have determined ahead of time that they should receive. In addition, you can do other things with your autoresponder. So you can do bulk mailings to your list. You can distribute newsletters. And you can have your autoresponder post to Facebook and other social media when you send out a newsletter letter, or a post or a blog or a, an email. So here's an example of an autoresponder capture form. Your prospect comes to your website. They enter their information and you've chosen what information they enter, typically name and email address. Sometimes you ask for a phone number. Sometimes you ask for other information, such as a physical mailing address. But beware that the more information you ask for, the less likely they are to fill in the form and opt into your list. So once they've filled in the form, they get automatically entered into your email list, and then your autoresponder sends them whatever emails you have predetermined they should receive. So let's start discovering how to create an Im and embed this form into our website. And by the way, the autoresponder I use is AWeber. Why? Simple. Because someone recommended it to me way back in the beginning. Uh, there are a number of other autoresponders out there, but I don't know much about them. I haven't tried them. Why? I've had very good luck with AWeber. It works very well. 
And once again, just like I told you about GoDaddy, AWeber's customer support is awesome. When I pick up the phone and I call them, they answer me, they talk to me, they answer my questions, and I've been very, very impressed with their customer service. So I simply don't have any experience with any other autoresponder. Well, let's move on and begin to look at how to get the autoresponder to work for us. So here we are. We're going to set up our autoresponder account and I'm going to use AWeber as an example. I am reasonably sure that other autoresponders work in a very similar way, but I really don't have experience with them. So we're going to use AWeber. <clears throat> now I'm going to assume that you don't have any autoresponder experience at all and we're going to start at the very beginning. So here I am at the AWeber homepage. I just typed AWeber into Google and clicked on it. And first thing we're going to do is order. So when I click on order, you're going to find out that you can get a $1 uh, 30 day trial, first month for a dollar and then $19 a month uh, after that and you're going to simply go ahead and create your account with your login information and your name and address etc and your billing information and da 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 and once you're finished you'll create your account and um, I used the $19 account myself I got the $1 30 days for free and now I pay $19 a month and that's the way it works so once you are once you have your account and you have your username and password we can go ahead and sign in and I'm signing into my account now now when my account comes up it comes up with a bunch of lists already uh, already there and it comes up with a bunch of recent broadcasts that I've done and you're not going to have those of course because you won't have a list so you're going to start with creating a new list and let's just create a list called uh, why don't we just call it Lens Blog Training? So we'll do that. We'll call it Lens Blog uh, <laughs> Lens Blog List. Let's see that Lens Blog List. Uh, it doesn't like the spaces. You can see that Lens Blog List it says that list name is available. Cool. It will give it a description. Training List for Lens Blog Training. Alrighty, there we go. And the from name for this list is going to be my name. In your case, it's going to be your name, of course, and the email address that I want uh, people to receive an e email from when uh, they are getting emails from this list. So those things are pretty self explanatory. Now, notifications. I get to receive an email every time a new subscriber is added to my list and so I'm going to say yeah I'm going to enter my name and uh, I want it to come to me and the email address I want it to come to is len at lenmooney.com so there we go so there's where I'm going to receive my email notifications okay and we'll simply save our settings. So we're done with that. Now, we're going to brand it. What's our company name? Well, in my case, I'm just going to tell it it's Len Mooney because that's, that's all I really have. My website URL. Uh, well, we'll use the training website for this one. So Lens Blog Training uh, and I guess I need to put the HTTP in lensblogtraining.com and the signature on emails coming from this list is going to be me. In your case it's going to be you. So you'll put in your name. So there we have it, the company name, the website URL and the email signature. Now the next section is a section that I don't use uh, social media sharing. Do you want to integrate with Twitter and Facebook and customize your broadcast? And what, what happens here is anytime you send a broadcast message to your list, it will automatically go to Twitter or go to Facebook. I don't use that. And you can choose to use it if you want to. 
depending on what you're trying to do, that I just don't choose it. I want to I want to make a decision personally on a one-on-one -on -one basis whether I want to broadcast email to go to Facebook to be posted on my Facebook account. I don't want it to happen automatically. And global tech snippets we're going to ignore completely for right now. That's way beyond what we're going to talk about today. So again, we'll click on Save Settings. Now, the third thing we're going to do is um, our confirmed opt-in. Confirmed opt-in is anytime someone signs up to your list, they get an email message from a Weber asking them to confirm that they really want to be on your list. Now, to be honest with you, they will tell you that confirmed opt-in is a very good idea because it helps reduce the number of people on your list that uh, really don't want to be there. Uh, it, it ensures only recipients who have specifically requested to be on the list are subscribed. Well, if they're coming in through an opt-in form on my website, I don't know how it is that they could be people who didn't specifically request. I don't like confirmed opt-in. I turn it off. Honestly, most people that I know who are in the early stages of forming an email list turn this off. We want to see everyone. We want them in our list. Sometimes that extra step of having to confirm back just keeps somebody off your list who would otherwise be on there. Also, many times the confirmed opt-in request goes into spam and the person doesn't see it. So here they opted into your list, they want to be on your list, they want to get your email, and the request to confirm went into spam, they didn't see it, they don't know, understand why they're not getting a response back, and they sort of just throw up their hands, walk away, and say, well, this didn't work, and that's the end of that. So I don't like confirmed opt-in. Personal opinion. Now, if somebody does opt into your list, where do you want them to go? Well, in my case right now, we'll just send them right back to the training website. So lensblogtraining.com. And we may want to change that later and have a different address there, but we'll just leave that for now. HTTP lensblogtraining.com. I have to look at it to make sure I spelled it correctly. And I did. We'll save settings. And now we have our list set up. So let's just go to my lists. Actually, let's go home. We go home and we see that we have a new list called Lens Blog List. There it is. And we uh, don't have any subscribers in our list yet, <clears throat> but we have our list set up. Now, when you look in under our list, we've been doing we can look at list settings which is what we've been doing that's where we we were going was through list settings let's go back to my list there's also custom fields so we can set up uh, new fields for example phone numbers and, and etc if we want to and you can in addition set up some automation so you can set up rules so if somebody subscribes to one list they automatically go to a different list etc I don't generally mess with any of that stuff. So I just do you use the basic list settings that we've already seen. And that's pretty much what I do. Now, let's talk about messages. Follow-up messages. Right now, your your list doesn't have any messages. So you want to create email messages for your list. And Aweber has an HTML message editor that lets you go in and create email messages that you want to send. So, for example, we can click on create a new HTML message. And I do recommend HTML because it lets you put in hyperlinks, forms, and uh, buttons, and, and other things. Now, I'm not going to do an exhaustive training on Aweber's HTML um, editor but for example it does have various forms so that you can create newsletters and um, different topics so pets autumn Thanksgiving etc you can create your own newsletters 
or and I don't use any of this stuff so I'm just going to close this and here's our block editor our HTML editor and it gives you instructions for how to use this editor and again I'm going to get rid of it so I just want to create a simple email message I'll pull down this paragraph icon and now I have a paragraph that I can edit and I'm going to go dear um, oh, dear and we'll use the personalization here dear uh, first name welcome to my email list and website as time goes on you will receive valuable information from me I hope you enjoy it sincerely Len. so I'm not gonna go into a lot of work on creating emails right now creating email follow-ups uh, campaigns and etc that's a another topic for another day so here's our email message uh, we'll create a title welcome message from Len and there it is there's our message so and that's what's going to get sent out now we have an editor up here we can change the color of our messages we can change the background we can add hyperlinks there's a lot of things we can do for right now I just want to show I want to set up a, a very simple little message just show you how all this works so we can get on to the important thing which is creating forms so here I can click on test and preview if I click on test and preview it's going to ask me do I want to send a test yes I do so I'll send a test it says it's sending it and as soon as it says it's sent I can close the send and test now if we go look at my email oh there it is so there's my welcome message welcome to my email list etc so that's what the message looks like um, so we we know it's sending we can go back to a Weber and we'll just click next and save and exit so there it is saving that message and that message has an interval of zero which means when somebody opts into my list it's going to go out immediately and now starting from this point you can build series of email lists uh, series of emails that go out like you can have maybe 10 different emails discussing your product or your opportunity or whatever and it goes out one each day or you can have a uh, series of emails like I have on my single parenting site where people receive an email once a day for six days describing a different aspect of uh, the site or a different um, offer that I have so in fact let me show you that real quick so if we go back to my list and go to my single parenting list the, the list called the only parent and look at my messages what you will see is that there's a series of messages and the interval here is zero one one so the interval zero means the first message goes out immediately then the next message goes out one day later the next message goes one day after that, one day after that, etc., 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 etc. So there's a series of nine messages that go out, each one spaced one day apart. And they all fundamentally are very similar. Uh, I'll show you that first message. So it's welcome to Lens Rules for Running a Happy House, free video report rule number one, dear first name, and etc. And uh, if you click here it takes you to the video that's associated with this email and you can watch the video so that's how that's how that works you can generate again you can create these lists of uh, emails so that the uh, the person who opts in automatically gets an email once a day or once a week or whatever you want it to be there's a lot of things you can do with this we're just going to leave it at that so now that we have our the first email and our list now we're going to go to the to the meat of this thing and that's our web forms we want to put an opt-in form 
over on our website so that people can sign up for our email list or our um, newsletter. So here we go to web forms. And we're going to create a new web form. So here we go. Now you'll notice there is a whole a, a wide a range of different templates that you can choose from. Let's just pick the first one for example. And if I say load template, what we have is a very simple name, email, and submit. Or here's another one. Load, load that template. Very simple. Name, email, submit. Now, we've, we've been playing and building our website, and if you recall back, I happen to like to snow ski. So let me click on the Show More button here and click on Recreation. And as I scroll through Recreation, well, here's something with waves. Here's bookshelves. Here's golf. Here's music, sheet music. And here's something that says let it snow uh, that could be interesting since and here's uh, jamming guitar here's a uh, spa resort piano so there's lots of different themes that you can choose from and uh, actually I want to go back to show more so there was recreation there was one other travel okay in travel there was one that I thought was pretty interesting and that is um, let me find it here. Yeah, maybe maybe it wasn't in travel. Uh, default feed me envelope, shiny buttons, pumpkins, animals, pointers, download, gift box, boutique. And maybe it's just the one in uh, in recreation. So we'll just go with that. We'll go with the uh, with the skiing one that we saw a minute ago. <clears throat> there we go. Let's just let's just load that up load template so there's our there's our template and uh, it says added header okay fine what would I want in the header let it snow snow and snow good so that's what we'll put in the header notice we can center it we can change the size of it we can change the color of the font We'll just put it there. And then our footer, edit footer, and hand snow. I, whoops, hand snow. So there we go. We'll center that. So there's our temp, there's our little form, let it snow and snow and snow. And uh, well, let's add another, uh, let's add another field to it. Let's create a new field. And the field I want to create is phone. And I want to save it. And it's going to be a text box. And the question is, do I make it required or not? Sometimes sometimes people are reluctant to give their phone number, so let's not make it a required field. So there's our form so far. Let it snow and snow and snow. And if this says submit, let's edit submit. Uh, okay, Len, send me the free newsletter. So we're going to sign people up for our newsletter. That doesn't quite fit in there. So uh, let's edit it down. Send me the newsletter. Let's make it uh, let's make it a little bit shorter. Although we could make we could make our form wider. Um, all right, fine. We'll just make send me the free news. Send me the newsletter. Okay, I don't want to make the form wider, and you'll you'll see why in a little bit. 
All right, so there's our form. So we've created, we've created an opt-in form for our list or for our website. Now what we have to do is go install it in our website. So let's save the form. We're happy with it. And well, we'll save this. Okay. Save the web form. We're happy with our form. And now go to step two. Now, step two, settings. Facebook integration. We'll come back and talk about that perhaps later, but if I enable Facebook registration on this form, what happens is when someone clicks on the form, it will be automatically loaded with their Facebook login name and password, or not password, sorry, um, email address. They won't have to load that themselves. It will automatically load that information. Well, why not? Let's just go do it. We'll put that on. Okay? And now we'll go to step, well, we'll save the web form, and we'll go to step three. Now here's where it gets interesting. Publish. I will install my form. My web designer will install my form or have Aweber host my form. Well, we're going to install our own form. So, and we're going to use the raw HTML code. So here is the HTML code that we need to put into our website to install our form. So I'm going to click in this field and remember now it's already selected everything but if we needed to on the PC control A would select all and then control C would copy everything. So now I have copied all of that information to my clipboard and let's go to our website. Now this should look familiar to you. This is the website we've been working on and let's go to our dashboard and I'm going to show you several things we can do with this form now. First off, let's create a new page. So we'll add a new page and I'll call this for the sake of uh, for the sake of playing with this I'll call this our sales page. And this is the page where we're going to tell people that uh, you can sign up for my free monthly newsletter by filling in the form below. Okay, we'll just leave that for now. Now I'm going to go to the HTML. We are in HTML. We're in the HTML editor. Notice what I'm going to do. I'm simply going to copy or paste rather and I have just pasted all the HTML code for that form into my website. Let me publish that. We'll be really bold and view the page. And there is our form loaded on our page. And now all your customer has to do is come in here, fill in their name, their email address, and optionally their phone number and click on send me the newsletter and what happens is they are now their email and name is now loaded into your Aweber autoresponder and let's go back to editing that page because I can't spell monthly let me take it out okay well there are other things we can do with the form I'm going to remove the form right now. I'm going to take it out of there. Because I want to show you something else. Something we didn't talk about is there are page attributes. We can tell this page that we want it to be a page with a, a, using what they call the sidebar template. And we can update that now. When we do that, what you're going to see, uh, we're waiting for it to update, and it looks like that the uh, web, the uh, internet is not going to 
cooperate with me on this one. There we go. We'll have to reload. Um, oh, that's pages. I need our pages. That's our posts. I need our pages. On our sales page. Okay. Let's take it out of there. Take the whole thing out. Use our sidebar template and update. Now we've used the page with the sidebar template. So you're going to see, here's our sales page. You can sign up for my free monthly newsletter, but our form isn't there. Where's our form? Well, let's go to our widgets. And here is our show, showcase sidebar. I'm going to add a text widget. And in our text widget, I'm going to paste the Aweber HTML code for that form. I'm going to save it, and close it, and we're going to go back and visit our site, look at our sales page, and our um, Aweber form, hang on, just one moment, we have one more step to take here. Our sales page needs to be the showcase template because that's what we put that in. We put the sidebar into the showcase template and there it is. So there's our there's our form. Now I don't particularly like that because the form is the form doesn't have quite enough room there, but that's partially because my video is too big. So what I really have to do now is uh, shorten is is make the video a little bit smaller so I have a little bit more room for the form and I can do that. But let me go and do something else. Let me show you something else here. Again, I'm going to go back to my pages, my sales page. I want to do the sidebar template. I really want to do the sidebar template on this page. And so now what I'm going to do is go back to my widgets and I'm going to put my Take, I'll take that text out of the main sidebar and put it in the or out of the uh, showcase sidebar and put it in the main sidebar because I want people to see the opt-in. I'm going to move it to the top and now I'm going to go back to my pages and I'm going to show you that page again. So now is over here on the main sidebar. Okay. I want to fix that form up a little bit. Uh, let's go back to my Aweber account and uh, I'm going to go back to the settings for this form and I'm going to take out the Facebook integration. And the reason is I believe the Facebook integration is what is causing me trouble right now. So I'm going to copy this code, go back to my site, uh, back to my widgets. Well, widgets and repaste all this. Paste, save. Okay, close. And now I'm going to go visit the site. And there, now my form fits. So you see what happened there is that the uh, 
the fact that I had made it a Facebook compatible form had widened it up too much for the site. So now it fits, it's on the main sidebar and it's uh, up on the sidebar in the sales page that I generated. There's my sales page and th th there you have it. So there's a couple of different ways that I can integrate my form into my um, into my website and let me show you all this now. Let me go ahead and log into the form. I'll use my name. I'm going to use my uh, Hotmail email address. And uh, I'll leave the phone number out for now. Sign me up for the newsletter. Thanks for subscribing. It returns me to the site like it's supposed to. You can see that returning me to the site like it's supposed to. There we go. Back to the site. Now let me show you in AWeber. We'll go back to our we'll go back to our lists in AWeber, list settings. We'll go back to this blog list and I'll see we have one subscriber. Let me click on the list and show you under subscribers we'll search. And there we have Len, uh, my name, my email address, I subscribed to the list. So there you have it. There is a uh, sort of complete expose through setting up AWeber, setting up your web form, integrating your web form into your website, and opting in, and notice what will happen now is if I go to my emails, since I signed up as Len Mooney at email at uh, hotmail.com, I should now receive that first email from the list. There it is, that welcome message automatically came to me. So that's how all that works. I hope you've learned something from this and I am going to stop the recording at this moment in time. Here we